Hello, good evening. Doug here from the Hundred Fold Journey. Thanks again for joining us on this Wednesday Night Live, where we, where we give you the opportunity to meet the leadership team. And tonight we have myself and Rashi from the Hundred Fold Journey. Hey, Rashi. Hi, good evening. The Hundred Fold Journey is about a group of people that are looking to find their true identity and by doing so, finding God's true identity. Our whole purpose is to come alongside of you on your journey on your spiritual journey as you're trying to find yourself and again at the same time finding God. So we want to provide resources, tools, uh, books, or challenges um, to help you along the way because I know for me and Rashi uh, each one of those uh, have brought us on the journey that we're here and we just want to share our journey with you. So with that said uh, there is a challenge that we're currently in the middle of and it's called March Mindful, March Mindful Challenge. And uh, Rashi is our author and editor and, uh, and publisher of that challenge. And we wanted to talk through what mindfulness means uh, to us and specifically to Rashi. So we thought we'd use this time tonight to talk about that. So with that said, Rashi, why don't you kind of give us an introduction of what your thoughts were about developing the March Mindful Challenge. Sure, uh, good evening everybody. So, uh, well, initially we started out with the Happiness Challenge in January and then in February we went into love and uh, specifically self-love. Um, and our purpose with that was to, again, to um, build the confidence, you know, just uh, become self-aware. And again, just slowly moving into this month, we just started the mindful challenge. And uh, essentially the purpose of this challenge is to help you become more aware of yourself and connect with yourself and uh, be present because it's so important to be in the present moment um, constantly. Uh, you know, our minds are constantly scattered. We have 60 to 70,000 thoughts a day, um, you know, and a lot of them tend to be negative, very chaotic. Um, and so all these thoughts can also have an effect on our physical self, physical body. Um, so in that sense, when we, when I, you know, Doug and I, we uh, consider doing this mindful challenge, uh, mind, mindfulness, we wanted to encourage you and um, kind of set these daily reminders just to bring you just for a few minutes a day into that presence of mind, into and, the present and, moment. Yeah. And just, just to reiterate the, the 60 to 70,000 thoughts that we have, 90% of those are the same ones that you had yesterday and the day before and the day before. So what we're trying to do here is with this mindful challenge is start creating new neural paths, new thought processes yes. that will get you out of those old habits and old thinking and into these new ones. Correct. Yes. Excellent. And um, again, also within the brain, just release the right types of chemicals because we all mm -hmm. struggle with such an imbalance, you know, with our yep. emotions, with our moods with just daily life. So just these simple acts every day can release the right concoction of chemicals um, that can keep you in a very peaceful state um, through a daily daily uh, basis. Mm -hmm. um, and so we started out the mindful uh, challenge this month with just essentially kind of becoming aware of the five senses. Um, and these five senses, you know, sight, smell, taste um, here, these, uh, did I get them all? Yes, I did. Yeah, <laughs> I think smell, I did. One of those, yeah. Yes, all five senses. So basically getting in touch with them, becoming aware of them. Um, uh, and, and why this is important is, again, just feeling these things, feeling what you have in your surrounding and how that's contributing to how you're feeling and your state of uh, being in that present moment. Um, and then essentially that leads to how what you're contributing, right? So if, for example, if you're sitting for a moment and you're taking a couple of minutes um, and you're picking out, you know, one thing that you see, one thing that you hear, one thing you smell and kind of um, touching up on each sense, right? Uh, you're also then able to be become more aware of the sounds and the, the, the things that you're contributing to your outside environment. And then again, like awareness is, um, is key. Right. So once you're becoming aware, that's the only way you're able to understand something. And once you understand something about yourself, that's the only way you're able to change it or better it. Right. Um, and so this is how we started the challenge. And slowly, as we're getting into the challenge each day, 
um, again, our purpose is to just remind you to take a moment for yourself and connect with yourself. Um, and ultimately the, the bigger goal, the bigger ultimate purpose is to um, spiritually awaken and, and have that God realization, right? Connect with God, connect with the God within yourself, yeah. uh, the divinity within yourself. Yeah, and, uh, and we talked a little bit about that uh, with, with Rich about the, uh, the God spark, you know, that's yes. in us and tapping into that and being aware that it's there and taking the time to actually sense it and feel it um, is what we're talking about and just being aware of that being there. Because again, 60 to 70,000 thoughts, we're just, it just gets pushed down, pushed down, pushed down. And oh, by the way, that light never goes out. So you never have to worry about that. But it can be, as the Bible says, it can be hidden or put under a bushel, and, uh, but it never goes out. Right. Excellent. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Anything else? <laughs> yeah. So you started with the, uh, the five senses. So why do you think that was so important? And I, I know, uh, um, you know, each, each day you're going to start with the five senses. And, uh, so why was it important for you to, to start with them? Um, so again, just to become more aware and more connected to ourselves and connected and to what happens when we do that, right? What happens when, we're um, so, so when we do that, we're becoming more aware of what we're contributing ourselves to the, our outside surroundings. So we're living from the inside out rather from, yes. rather than from the outside in, right? So rather than absorbing everything that we're seeing and we're hearing and, um, whatever it is, that is the stimulus that's going on, a stimuli that is happening around us, right? To, instead of taking that in we are in control. We are essentially in control of what we're putting out and what our reality is around us. Mm -hmm. um, so this is just a small step. It's not, you know, diving deep into yourself. It's not, uh, it's not something that can just happen right off the bat within the next five minutes or, you know, overnight. It's, it's, it's a very slow process, um, getting in touch with that deep um, spark within you, as you say, the God spark. Right. Um, so again, this is just a small step is, just to have that presence of mind, right? Mm -hmm. Your mind is focused on um, something in, in particular and on nothing else. Those 60 to 70,000 thoughts at that, at that particular moment don't matter, right? Mm -hmm. Because you're focused on, okay, you know, let me just think about what I, what I see and, and what I hear and how it's, it's contributing to me and how it makes me feel, mm -hmm. right? Um, and essentially becoming aware of our feelings and Again, like I said, awareness uh, is the most important thing. And once we're aware, we understand it better. And then we're able to, to either better it, change it, whatever we want with it, uh, be in control essentially. Because most of our problems are happening when we feel like we're losing control and we don't yeah, have control, control over things, right? And so we have this like uh, innate sense that, you know, we just, we want something to be under our control um, to kind of satisfy that maybe that ego or maybe satisfy just that, physical aspect of ourself but um uh essentially we realize that that's that's it's not it it's not in our within our um not within our control uh not within our control that's not what i mean i'm sorry i lost my train of thought um but yeah essentially those things don't matter and 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 the power of of having control over yourself is the most important thing right, right. Um, and eckhart tolle has the book the power yes. of now and that one had a significant impact because it did show that the importance of being in the present, present tense, and, um, and living in the now, because we take so many things for granted. Um, and I think that's the other part of it is, is we do take things for granted. You know, the picture that we have on our website is of the lady smelling the flowers and mm -hmm. just taking it all in, right? She's, she sees them. You know, she reaches up and she smells them. She feels them. She, she's, you know, all of the senses are just uh, uh, being driven there. So she's in the moment enjoying what she's seeing um, versus, you know, some other person that just kind of, oh, that's nice. And then you just kind of keep going. Right. Uh, you miss those occasions to, to awaken yourself. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Um. And yeah, just like today, for example, our challenge was deep breathing. Deep breathing. And uh, 
you know, just essentially taking two minutes out of your time to just do some deep inhale and exhale um, exercises, uh, which essentially helps kind of calm the mind, um, you know, bring immense peace and you're able to better make better judgment when you come out of that, even just if, even if it's just for a few minutes, right, mm -hmm. you're able to kind of clear your head. Mm -hmm. um, and essentially that's the purpose of that. Yeah, so, and uh, you shared with me earlier that next Wednesday, you wanted to kind of expand upon what that really means. Uh, yes. And, and maybe even share some details about how to do that, why to do it. Uh, so be looking for that next Wednesday on Wednesday Night Live. Uh, Rashi will share that with you. Yes, absolutely. I just kind of wanted to dive. I, I was very intrigued by um, just the power of the breath. I mean, I had I came across a couple of different stories of different people that uh, were scientifically studied and experimented on and, and kind of watched over mm -hmm. um, through various trials and, and things. And um, I just found it very intriguing. So I will definitely be diving deep into that next week and we'll, we'll get into that and the importance of it all. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. And of course that all kind of leads into meditation and yes. uh, meditation and, and, and prayer and what that means. And breathing is a big part of that because it does relax and it uh, kicks in endorphins and such that just, just endorphins, not the right word. Uh, that's, that's hyper, but it would, it just calms you down um, so that you can focus on one thing and yes. whatever that mindfulness thing is. Yes, exactly. And uh, really when we're sitting down in silence and during meditation is really the time when we're, we're listening, if if that makes any sense. I mean, we're told to kind of sit in a quiet and silent place and, you know, uh, focus our attention on something and our breath essentially as well. Um, but that's really the only time that we're really listening because mm -hmm. your, your mind is, right, is kind of picking up. And I know initially when I started meditating, I struggled with the sounds around me. Yep. So, you know, I would hear the kind of the tap you know, dripping or, yeah. you know, I'd hear some kind of sh shuffle, scuffle somewhere. And, you know, I, my mind would go to that. But the more I became aware, I'm like, okay, you know, it's there. These things are there, you know, exactly. you, you kind of exactly. learn to kind of tune that out. And um, I, I thought, you know, so again, the meditation, just deepening yourself into this meditative state and uh, the practice of meditation yeah. is, is pretty phenomenal. Yeah, and uh, uh, and for me, it's the uh, the monkey mind where it just uh, yeah. it just going and jumping all around and you know the rabbit trails and you know you just got to keep bringing yourself back and and the the more you do it, the easier it gets. But uh, but yeah, I call it the monkey mind because it just it just keeps going. Yes. Yeah, and so I the know breathing, for everybody, the breathing helps with that. Yeah, it really does, and it's a very simple, very basic, very innately. Um, uh, existent right i mean it's something that everybody does like we're born with the breath we die with our last breath right after that it's it, after and before there's nothing else mm -hmm. so and and something that i heard that was very powerful is that the breath is the barometer right for the body it's a pressure gauge and hmm. when we're we're like breathing that. and we're right we're breathing and we're, we shouldn't have any hiccups kind of thing or any, you know, there's a certain technique and kind of, and again, the, 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 the way to become aware of all of this is again, mindfulness, right? Yes. To be aware of the breath and aware of this, the smooth, the, the, the very smooth way of breathing, right? Like it, there should be no hiccups and whatnot. Um, so, so yeah, just these simple steps. That brings up a good point. Cause uh, today uh, after reading that I was, you know, mindful of the breath. And I don't know, a couple hours later, I was working and I was typing furiously on an email and just making sure it was just right. And I noticed that I wasn't breathing. And mm. I actually kind of stopped and then I, okay. Wow. And I actually did it twice because I, I caught myself where I was so intense that I actually wasn't breathing. And then I caught it and then I was like, okay, all right, I can, I can get this done. But it, it's, yeah you know, we do this subconsciously yes, um, and we need to be more mindful of, yes. of what we're doing and maybe even what we're not doing. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I know it's not easy for everybody to kind of get into the physiology of the body and the brain yep. and, and how it all works, uh, which has helped me tremendously because, 
Um, I love studying about the physiology of the body and the brain. And once I learned more of the physiology of the brain per se, um, I think I understood what parts, you know, are being affected and what parts uh, need to be kind of uh, worked on essentially. Yeah. Um, but what I found after kind of studying and kind of like uh, researching certain things, certain topics is that again, the breath is the simplest way, yeah. right? And it's the most available uh, and innately we have the capacity to, to be in power and have the power to, you know, cure ailments and cure diseases and just, just discomforts within ourselves. Yeah. Um, and like I've said before, we spend the most time with ourselves right? I mean, we have family, we have children, we have parents, we have spouses, but even they don't understand what's happening within us, right? Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really just us, you know, and, um, and I'll, like, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of share this. When, when I became a mother, I, uh, I had this thought right after I, I, you know, gave birth to my son, I was just like, and as he, of course, he grew up a little bit, I think he was a, he maybe a toddler, um, but I did have this thought, like, you know, he grew up, he grew inside me. I grew him in my womb, <laughs> but when I brought him into the world, there was yeah. no way of me knowing or feeling what he was feeling or no oh, way of me knowing what he was thinking. You couldn't feel those kicks and the tugs in the belly anymore. Right. right? <laughs> in yeah. the right. Or, or again, just, you know, like once they're out, there's no, as much as we think that, you know, we can have, um, we have the connection, but as much as we think that, you know, we know so much about somebody and, uh, you know, even if they're next to us, like our parents, like I said, but like a child that comes from you, you don't even know anything about them essentially, you know, they come in with their own thoughts, with their own mind, they, they pick yeah. up on behaviors and they condition themselves or not themselves, but the environment conditions them. Yeah. Um, but again, we spend the most time with ourselves, you know, and so uh, we need to do better for ourselves. I think we need to give ourselves more credit because we, we've been conditioned to think that, you know, we're not able to do this and that. And we have to depend on external sources like our healthcare system, our um, religious leaders, for example, or, you know, other sources for validation, for betterment for to just feel human for example but it, the reality is so much different and it's so powerful to know that it's all within you mm, right everything that's within right you. everything you need is within you yes and you already have yes and you so, already have it yep just don't so, know it yet no it just needs to be awakened and awakened. Uh, yes awakened and, and that's and that where mindfulness perfect segue there it's the mindfulness that that you're aware that you have everything yeah. Yes, just like the breath thing. I think it was in your in the in your mind, right? Like just today, like you said, yeah. you're writing that email. It happens yeah. to me all the time. Like I'll be on the phone and you yeah, know, and like, it's oh, amazing how oh it did God, calm me down. I, I took right. I took two deep breaths and it was just like, ah, oh, you know, my shoulders went down and, and I just it just changed the whole uh, the whole feel that I had. And it just took two breaths. It was uh, pretty breaths. powerful. That's amazing. And yeah. again, that's, that's our, that's our purpose with this, right. Is to just remind, remind yes. ourselves, remind whoever we can. Um, and, and that was something I shared with you, which I came across maybe last week that somebody posted that I saw, um, you know, we often hear, or we often see on social media nowadays, like, Oh, I don't know who needs to hear this, but you know, you're beautiful or you're this. And that's what right. I, in, in this person said, it's not, it's not anymore what you need to hear. It's what you need to be reminded of. Mm -hmm. And, and I think that's essentially what we're trying to do here is just to remind everybody that, you know, we're all so powerful and we're all connected and yep. um, we can all, again, through love, we can just help each other. That's the best way Amen. to get. And just this. that word, remind, remind. <laughs> remember yes. what, what, uh, who you are and remind yes. yourself, remind, uh, rewire your brain basically, or go yes. back to its original design. Yep. Yes. Yes. Um, so yeah, so I'm excited for next week. We'll talk about, yeah. uh, I came across this person named Wim Hof, yep. a fantastic man. And I think, you know, I'm not sure if people have heard of him, but, uh, he's, you know, one of those that's kind of challenged himself to extremes. Um, he set something like 26 Guinness world records uh, in extreme conditions um, and all through the power of his mind, he's been able to control uh, basically what he says are stress factors from mm -hmm. 
from uh, the outside, right? right? And he's not basic. He's basically not letting them affect him and affect his body through the power of his mind, through the power of breath. And so, in other words, he's living from the inside out. Inside out, yes, yeah. exactly. And uh, it was funny because as I was going through his story, which I'll share, of course, I'll share. I'll save more for the next week. But um, it's just so exciting because I was so, uh, you know, I was you were uh, deep into it, really deep into <laughs> it, yeah. Um, but I like what he said. He's like, you know, I'm a school dropout, but here I am teaching these like hmm. professors and these doctors, like how hmm. this technique works. And it's all like, um, it's all self-taught. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm sure he had sources of yep. teachings, but it's, it's pretty phenomenal what he's done with himself and what he's done just with his life. Cool. Well, yeah, we'll look forward to uh, hearing more on that uh, next week. Awesome. Okay. I'll definitely put that together. And uh, yeah, we'll just keep continuing with the mindful challenge. And I hope that everybody's finding it to be helpful. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things I wanted to share tonight was maybe what you could specifically think about reminding yourself of who you truly are. And what I wanted to share is just a few slides, but um, the point I'm trying to make is that that God spark that's, that's in us um, remembering whose we are, because we are God's creation. He created us, he formed us, we're in his image and in his likeness. So with that said, uh, let me just share this real quick and then, uh, and then we'll finish up with this. So um, first off, just asking the question, you know, what do you see in this picture? And Rashi, I know you've already seen this, but uh, Rashi, what do you see in this picture? Yeah, I see um, a not so confident cat striving to be a lion. Right, exactly. So, you know, when, when you look at that picture, you know, some would describe, well, it's the lion that's within. Um, that's what the cat has seen, but, uh, but it's the cat, you know, looking at the reflection, but it doesn't match. There, there's not a match, right? So <clears throat> how would you fix this picture to reflect who you truly are in God's sight? So Rashi, how would you pick, fix this picture? Um, I would put the cat itself, uh, the reflection of itself, because um, it's God's creation. It's perfect the way that it is. And I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I don't think it needs to be, it needs to strive to be somebody else, regardless of whether it's a lion or a dinosaur or <laughs> who, you know, whatever is more powerful. Um, we're all powerful, I think, in our own way. And we all have our own purpose here. So uh, I think, yeah, I think just having a reflection of itself would right. fix it. Right. However, our, the reflection that we have of ourself might not be the correct picture that of who we truly are. Meaning the cat in reality does have a lion in them, but the way they see themselves is still as a cat. Mm. Right? So the way, the way I would fix this picture is I would have a mirror image mm. of having a cat or a tiger or excuse me, a lion, looking at himself as a lion. And the reason I chose lion is just because, you know, it's strength and courage and, you know, Jesus was the, the lion of the tribe of Judah and, and so forth. But this is the way God views you. It's not a cat hoping that someday there'll be a lion. And it's not a lion who views themselves as a cat it's a lion that views themselves as a lion and basically a green of how God views them because we tend to be mindful of our shortcomings mm. and we think of ourselves less than who we truly are. So we think that we are the cat, but someday I'll be that lion. One of these days, if, if I do this or if I change that, or whatever, whatever, then I will become that lion. And the truth is, and this is what you, I'd like you to be mindful of, the truth is, is that you are already there. 
this is the way God views you. And there's absolutely nothing that you can do to change this, to change God's view of you. And I don't care what religion has told you, and I don't care what you tell yourself, but there's tons of verses that talk about that. And I'll share a few of those before we close up. But whose opinion do you believe? Do you believe your opinion of yourself or do you believe God's opinion of yourself? Right? So be mindful of this. Be mindful of God's opinion that you are. Second Peter 1.3 says, as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Not some things, not a little bit, or not, you'll get it later. Given. Given means it's been given. Present tense. Uh, John 17. I and them, you and me, that uh, they may be perfected in unity. We're actually in union, perfect union with God, our Heavenly Father. First John 4, 17. As he is, so I am in this world. So when we think of Jesus, we think of perfection. We think of I'll just use the term lion, right? He was a lion. And it says here, as he is, so I am. So I am that lion. Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So God is not afraid of us being like him, or else he would not have done everything possible to reveal to us, even to the point of sending his son to be our true reflection. So Jesus is a reflection of who we are. And guess what? Now we're in unity, perfect unity with God the Father. Father, Son, Holy Spirit in you. If you ask me, that's crazy, right? You mean I'm equal with God? I'm equal with Jesus and the Holy Spirit, right? So I'm that cat looking at that reflection in the mirror, and I'm not seeing a lion. I'm seeing another cat because in my mind, that's not possible. But by faith, I can say, hey, that's God's opinion. I'm not, this is, I'm not making these words up. God is saying this. He's saying that we're in perfect union. As he is, so I am. Christ lives in me. He's given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. So be mindful of who's in you. It's God himself. We are his dwelling place. Be mindful of that. And now when you go and experience the things with your five physical senses, think of it as you are experiencing that with God, as God. So he is experiencing his creation through you. So when you're smelling the flower, it's as God, if God is smelling that flower at the same time as you are. In fact, that's exactly what's happening. So think of it that way. And then you can go, wow, God, you did a good job on this flower. And, and he'll say, thank you. And he'll be right in here. It's not, he's not up there somewhere. He's not out there. He's right in you. So now being mindful of that. So your senses then become heightened because now when you see a sunset or when you touch something soft or drink a, a, a nice cup of coffee or whatever, you can use those senses to remind you that that's God experiencing his life through you. So it's pretty amazing. No, fantastic. And on that same note, I mean, uh, on the contrary, if you're in a stressful situation and you're, you know, you're aware of the fact that this is God experiencing this physical world and this realm through you, would you ever want to put yourself in that or put him in that yeah. stressful situation along with you? um is i think that i mean this was just a thought pop again in my head right now and i was like wow yeah if that's the case then why would i want to put him through that within me yep. through me right i mean why would we want to do that to ourselves essentially yeah and the amazing thing is that god never leaves us nor forsakes us right and even when we do stupid stuff he's doing it with us however He's in there in your mind and he's yelling and screaming, saying, don't do that. I wouldn't do that. Not a good idea. Don't do that. Doug, come on. Remember you did that before and it got you in trouble. Don't do it again. Then you do it. But then there's no condemnation. 
because in, in Romans, it says there's therefore no, no condemnation. So then after the fact, then, then he says, all right, how are we going to fix this? Come on, Doug, let's, let's get this together. Uh, let, let, we'll, I'll work with you because all things work together for good. Mm -hmm. So I'll turn this into your good. Don't worry about it. We'll fix it. All right. So that's kind of when you have that thought process, then to your point, Rashi, it's like, then why would I want to do that in the first place? Right. It's like it, it, it's nonsensical. So then you go, okay, I'm not going to do that this time. Right. Because right. regardless, Jesus is with me, right? It, it, yes. He doesn't leave me. But it, then it turns into what does it benefit me? And then you start, then you go down a rabbit trail and you can say, well, what's causing me to think I need that when right. I have all of this? What do I think I have to have that for? And then- right. And those thought, thoughts, thought, you know, becoming mindful of all of that yes. is pretty. Yes. yes, exactly. Yeah. And it just, again, it starts with the really just the basic, simple things yes. like just the breath, the senses, Bingo. Um, being aware of your physical, um, very basic physical needs and uh, just the things that are keeping us alive, essentially. You know, there's so many little, little mechanisms and little um actions that are just autonomically happening right mm -hmm. and uh when we're becoming aware of this autonomic automatic uh action right from our body uh again we're understanding it we're becoming aware we're understanding it and uh, i think the phrase building... that i like to use is that we're aware that we're aware we're right? aware that, that we're actually aware. outside kind of looking at us and saying Doug, why did you have that thought? So now you're aware that you're aware and that yeah. is an awakening. Yes. Yeah. Pretty crazy. It's like, it's kind of a trip. Cause you're like, okay, you're like two people in one and you're, uh -huh. you know, uh -huh. you're, yeah, it's very interesting. And when we, when I get into that, I know I get into that several times, uh, maybe a week, I don't know, a day sometimes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty trippy. It's, mm -hmm. it's interesting to say the least to be like observing yourself as an observer yes right rather than being in the body and yes. looking outward yes so and uh we're again we we spend the most time with ourselves and we are our best friend and we are our best cricket critic mm -hmm. so very true we really have to be true to ourselves essentially and hopefully not hopefully i know i can assure because i know it's it's working with me where i felt for a long time that i was living this duality right and i still at times i do feel like i'm living a duality where my inside is not matching my outside yep. so um i'm consistently each day working to kind of bring a, a merge the two essentially right and and have a more coherent yep. um life i guess if that's if that's, that's because the, life is a mirror which yes. reflects back what you truly believe and think Yes, and exactly. and God is there to guide us, prompt us, encourage us, direct us, uh, hold our hand and, and go through that whole process. Because what his desire for us is wholeness, is to be complete yes. and whole. We already are. We just don't yes. know it yet because there's things that we want to hold on to. Now, I want to hold on to that. Yes. I don't want to let control. Our, and God's really patient. Okay, you know, you're fine. We'll take care of that. Um, yes. And then eventually, yeah, why was I thinking I had to hold on to that? Okay, here you go. All right. Here you go. Then you got right. another one, right? Yeah. So uh, yeah. he's patiently working with us through all of that. Yes. Yeah. And it's, yeah, it's interesting because before I would look at my trials and tribulations as like, mm. oh God, why is this happening to yes. me? Like, why yes. me? Like I'm the victim, you know, constantly. But now I look at them as like, okay, what are you teaching me? What is yes. this a test for? And now, and it's gotten a, a step further where I'm like, okay, I understand what you're trying to teach me. And I'm sorry I messed up this time. And, you know, we'll, okay, bring something again, you know, have, make something happen again and all. So it's kind of, it's every day, you know, and every, it can, and it could just be something as small as like, you know, me having a disagreement with my child or having a yeah. disagreement with my spouse. Right. Yeah. And I'm just like, Oh God, I shouldn't have said that, you know? Okay. Now I understand why I said that. And so it just, again, it's, it's just working that inner dialogue out um, and just kind of unraveling it. Right. That's Rather than good. just letting it wind and letting it wind and, um, and just building up into a big ball of just, you know, emotions and, and which then eventually and, pops and then, yes. yeah, then ugliness happens. 
Yes, yes. Yeah, it's interesting because uh, in James, um, it talks about consider it pure joy, my brethren, when you face various trials and tribulations, for we know that it strengthens our faith, which is gold, which is pure gold. So, you know, the, the analogy there is when you heat up gold, the dross comes to the top and you skim it off and then it becomes nice and glassy and you heat it up some more. So as you just described, right, it reveals to yourself um, things that we need to change. So it changes your attitude towards yes. difficulties. It's like, man, what, what could I have learned and what caused that to happen? And then you change yourself and man, it just, life gets better so much better because it's like as as you face them and then you learn to kind of work through them and maybe overcome them in the yep. right way yep then you kind of understand and you see for yourself that they don't happen anymore these yes. they're, they're they happen less and less they occur less and less because yep. you're passing more of the tests per se yes. and you know you're kind of clearing the way for yourself to get through life in a more peaceful way and a more mindful way so again, back to the mirror is a reflection of what we truly believe and think. So when we don't see those things anymore, then we know those yeah. aren't true in our lives. Therefore, yes. they pass by us because in a sense, we pass that test, right? Yes. So, so we also need to be mindful of the changes that have occurred in our life that are more peaceful, are more joyful and being mindful of that and say, I wouldn't normally have reacted in that situation that way, but now I, I have because I've changed yes. because life is a mirror. So, so then you can be mindful of that and just be, wow, God, thank you. And now there's yes. a state of appreciation and being in gratitude and, and then it's just, it snowballs and gets better yes. and better. Better and better. Yes. Yeah. And so, yeah, each day just be mindful yes. of everything that we're doing, everything we're saying and just, just be yourself. Perfect. Be yes. All right. Good way to end it. So Rashi, awesome. thank you so much uh, for your time and especially the energy that you're putting into these daily challenges. Uh, sure. It's, it's not an easy task, um, but your creativeness and the pictures have been uh, fantastic and they really depict exactly what you're trying to get across. So uh, just really appreciate that. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Yeah, it's my pleasure. And um, if it can help me, I know it can help somebody else. So that's my main motivation to just, right. you know, keep doing it each day. Fantastic. So with that said, uh, we'll conclude our Wednesday night live. You can always reach out to us on Facebook through a post if you have any questions. Also, if you have a thought that you would like us to cover on Wednesday night, a subject that you would like us to cover, uh, please post that uh, on our Facebook. And then, of course, we have our website, the hundredfoldjourney.com. On there, you'll see uh, we've got some meditations. We've got uh, Sundays with Doug, where I'm doing a study on, uh, we just concluded, concluded the seed and the sower, and we're doing seven IM statements. And happy to join anytime uh, Sunday mornings at eight o'clock. And then we've got challenges on there. We've got the 21 days of gratitude, 21 days of identity. And uh, we've got some stories, in, not stories, but um, some backstories about how Hundredfold was created. So love to have you join that uh, website by signing up and uh, you'll be getting emails uh, on, on occasion. All right, so that concludes it for tonight. So again, Rashi, thanks again for your time. Thank you, Doug. Thank you so much. All right, bye-bye right. for now. Bye, good night, guys.